Hey guys, it's just Wilson here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the hourglass formula, or more specifically, how females can use their hormones to shape their body into that round hourglass tone physique. So first and foremost, um, this may sound a little bit skeptical for you, but I'm going to be explaining how you can eat more, how you can exercise less, and burn fat as you rest. Now, as I say, you'll probably sound skeptical. Um, uh, reading that right now, but the t the point of today's lecture is to help you understand the basics of that, how this is how you get results, and actually by exercising less so, and, and eating more and burning fat in your rest is the way to go forward. So let me explain. Firstly, who out of these two physiques would you say is more muscular? Would you say it's the marathon runner, or would you say it's a sprinter on your right? Well, it's the guy on the right, it's a sprinter. Now, this is what I want you to think. The sprinter is working in, in periods of no more than 10 seconds at a time, okay? The marathon runner, however, the endurance athlete, is running for over two hours at a time. So the marathon runner's workout is actually longer. The sprinter's workout is much shorter at periods, yet the sprinter has more muscle. More muscle. Okay, let's move on. So we've got Paula on the left and we've got Jessica on the right. Now, which of the two would you say is leaner? And when I say leaner, I mean less body fat, more definition, um, not who's the smallest. Okay, so who would you say of the two is more leaner? So again, it's the guy on the right, it's Jessica. She, she's, you, you can clearly see the more definition is showing up. Um, she's got a clear, visible six-pack. And this would, this would actually... Um, decide that she was the more leaner of the two okay so there i'm not i'm not going for the who is the smallest i'm going for who is leaner who's got the less body fat okay again we've got paula and jessica now out of the two who would you say has the more female physique again it's the sprinter it's jessica on the right whereas paula's rectangular physique jessica has still got her curves on who, who again is the sprinter wins this race Okay, so out of the two again, we've got the sprinter, we've got Usain Bolt on the left, and we've got a marathon runner on our right. Who of the two would you say burns more calories? And you probably said the sprinter, um, but you're wrong. Actually, the marathon runner will burn more calories in their um, in their workout, in their in their performance. So the the actual amount of calories burnt in the marathon lasting over two two hours is going to be far superior to the sprinter who's only running for 10 seconds or so, or 20 seconds flat out for, for, for periods of time. Um, so out of the two, um, what we can start to understand here, guys, out of the marathon, marathon runner and the sprinter, the marathon runner had more muscle tissue. He was, or she was leaner. Um, she also had a, a more feminine physique and we've just um, pointed out that um, there are more calories burned in the marathon runner than in the sprint race. So what does this say? Well this point proves that calories do not dictate your results. Okay, And what I want you to take away from today is that hormones, or more precisely the impact that your workout or the food or the lifestyle has on your body and your hormones in particular is going to dictate whether we're gaining weight or we're getting lean and we're dropping body fat. So weight loss doesn't doesn't weight loss does not equal fat loss. Weight loss is about calories, fat loss, and what we're after is about hormones. Now go if you were to walk into a doc into your doctors and tell them that you want to lose weight, they are going to likely give you a calorie restricted diet and they're going to give you a workout, something like an aerobic workout. And this is because doctors who spend very little time on nutrition will go down the route of you've got to eat less and exercise more and create a calorie deficit. Now, we do need to create a calorie deficit, but we've already pointed out through those examples that the, the our physiques are more dictated by the hormones and the, the the outcome from the workout and the food and the lifestyle that we're that we're living, um, and not down specifically to calories. We are not calculators. We are more like thermostats. 
okay, and we've got to find this balance between these hormones, okay, and we've got to find a balance between these calories at the same time. So let me explain the hormonal model for you. Um, so when I say hormones, what do you, what, what hormones come to your mind? You're probably thinking testosterone and estrogen, but there are other hormones that are responsible for actions such as insulin, glucagon, cortisol, serotonin and dopamine. Um, you've probably heard of serotonin and dopamine. These are, the, these are the hormones that if you're suffering with anxiety or depression, your doctor is going to give you. Now, here's the thing to take away. Hormones will determine the type of calorie you are burning. Just because um, you are burning calories, those calories may or may not burn, be, be burning fat calories. And just because you are losing weight, um, that weight may or may not be fat. So when we talk about hormones, um, we also got to um, we also got to hormones dictate where the fat is going to be stored on your body. So where would you say females are going to store their body body fat? We would tend to say this is going to be on the bum, the thighs, and the hips area. And um, where would you say males are going to store their body fat? We would again to say around about the belly and the chest area. Okay, um, so. Hormones will dictate where the fat is being stored, um, and and the way that we go around hormones is that they they will affect. Unlike calories, we if we were to just cut calories and increase exercise, like so many people do, you will notice that will oftentimes have a big effect on your hunger, your energy levels, and cravings, such as you be feeling moody, such as the um, you, you, whether you're not feeling satiety or fullness, um, such as your health and your lack of motivation. You might notice you start skipping uh, workouts and not feeling very motivated. And you might notice that you've got really low energy and poor moods. Um, so, and that's what the calorie restricting model will do for you. You see, because calories or cutting calories will not balance out your hormones. And this is the big impact that hormones will have on us is that it will affect your hunger, your energy levels and your cravings. So when we talk about weight loss and fat loss, fat loss is about hormones and balancing out those hunger, energy and cravings. Whereas as weight loss is just about calories. And this is why 95% of the population fail to even lose weight or keep the weight off when they go down the dieting route, the weight loss route is because it doesn't take care of the hormones and more specifically the hunger, energy levels and cravings that always make us skip workouts or mess up on a diet. So how many calories do you think sleep will have? Well actually there's no, it was a trick question, uh, there's no calories in sleep and how many calories do you think are in stress? Well there's also no calories that are in stress but we know you and I know that sleep will have a big effect on our hunger, energy and cravings. And we know stress will also have a big effect on our hunger, energy and cravings. We know these two, sleep and stress, will have a big effect on our, on our hormones and will lead to weight gain and put fat on our body. Okay, And not a calorie was involved in that process. So what we need to, be, what we need to start and understand is that both are responsive to changing the body. Um, body shape and storing fat, um, but it's it, but and that's not just because of calories, but it's because of hormones. Okay, so when we talk about fat loss and weight loss, we may think that we're eating a healthy diet, um, but a healthy diet does not always equal a fat loss diet. For example, let's take two breakfasts. We've got a bowl of brown flakes and we've got a cup of skimmed milk and a glass of orange juice, and then breakfast two. We've got an eight white egg omelet, a cup of tomatoes, a cup of spinach stuffed inside. We've got a cup of blueberries and a large apple. So which of those two breakfasts would you say has more calories? What is breakfast number one? It was the brown flakes, the skim milk and the orange juice, which is going to spike insulin in the morning. Um, but which of the two breakfasts would you say um, has more food? What is breakfast number two? The egg white, eight egg white omelet and tomatoes and veggies stuffed inside with the blueberries and apple. There was clearly more food. In fact, most of us couldn't even finish that breakfast, yet there was less calories in it. 
And which of the two breakfasts do you think are going to leave you feeling fuller um, for the rest of the day? Well, we know the bran flakes and that typical type of traditional breakfast tends to make us feel hungry around about 11 o'clock. And this is probably why those 11s breakfast cereal bars were invented um, because if the, the traditional um, you know, a traditional British breakfast of being very high, high carbohydrate and less nutrients and less protein is going to not provide us a lot of calories, but also um, not give us that fullness feeling for longer. Wherever the omelette will do that for us, it will actually increase satiety so we don't have this continuous feeding throughout the day. Um, because it's very important, the food that we eat, we've got to understand what effects it has on our hunger hormones, such as uh, ghrelin and CCK. And then after the meal, what hormones it sends to burn the fat. And this is kind of what we tend to forget about when, we, when, we ch when we're choosing foods. Um, we, sometimes people get caught up in thinking it's all about the macronutrients, the carbs, the proteins, the fats. Um, but it's really not. It's about the nutrients that we're provided into our diet and more specifically what we're eating that, and the effect that it's having on our hormones. For example, nuts and seeds are healthy. Uh, whole grains are healthy. Avocados are heavy, healthy. But I'm not going to eat avocados a day because I'm not going to lose weight doing that. I'm going to be gaining fat. Um, if I eat, you know, three bags of nuts and seeds a day, the fat content is going to cause me to gain weight. So what we need, also need to understand that um, we've got it. We've got this battle between hormones and calories, but also we've got to understand that a healthy diet does not equal a fat loss diet as well. Okay. So this is the less exercise more approach. There's initial weight loss. Um, the hormonal response stunts your weight loss, okay, because um, we've got to under start understanding what food we're eating and what exercise are we doing that's going to have the impact on our, on our physique. Think back to the marathon runner and the sprinter and what that workout had on the physique. Exercise less and exercise more also causes something called metabolic damage. So oftentimes a lot of people when they start a corrective weight loss program, they will notice that they won't see a lot of weight loss in particular because they've got to reverse the damage that they, they caused with having a low restricted calorie diet. Because that caused a lot of muscle muscle loss, that body then needs to um, then needs to reverse that damage and put that muscle tissue back on to increase their metabolism, which is obviously going to show in the scales. So some, um, in fact, a lot of the population will notice because of dieting in the past that they will have to do this. They've caused the, caused this metabolic damage, and we actually need to um, correct this. Um, the thing is, if you're going down the weight loss route and these, you know, the calorie cutting like the Weight Watchers, the Slim World, and these these calorie restricting skinny shakes and juices, um, it will set you up for failure because you will be causing this damage to your body. And then when you hit that plateau, when you've you've had that initial weight loss, and then you're not seeing any more weight loss, then we start to um, become very tired and frustrated, um, slipping up on the diet, and we go into this vicious cycle of, of dieting and then falling off the bandwagon and binge eating. We oftentimes end up um, putting more weight on because of that metabolic damage, because of the loss of muscle tissue, and then we go back up to um, you, you know your let's for example let's say we've been eating a normal calorie intake per day was 2,000 calories and we've just cut ourselves down to a thousand calories a day your metabolism is going to drop to that thousand calories a day and then what happens when you binge eat and go back to your normal 2,000 calories a day because of that metabolic damage because your calories have been lowered to that me uh, metabolic rate you're now burning a thousand calories a day and you've just surplused it by a thousand calories a day because you're eating back at 2,000 calories you're now going to be gaining weight. And this is why people tend to gain more weight after a diet than they did previously before starting it. So then what happens is we give up and then the cycle repeats itself. Hormones, on the other hand, now let me explain how powerful they will affect the body. Um, have you ever heard of leptin? Well, leptin is like the fuel gauge. Leptin is released from the fat cells. So the more fat we've got, the more leptin is being released. And the leptin will then tell the hypothalamus in the brain um, to tell the thyroid gland to speed up the metabolism. Here's the problem. You can become hormonal resistance. 
So um, a lot of us are hormone resistant. I mean, for example, have you ever heard of metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance? Well, let me explain it this way. If we was to um, walk into a, a room and we could smell a really strong odor of smell, we might at first notice the smell, our eyes might have water a little bit, and while this happens, after about um, 20 minutes, we get used to it, okay? And this is, ha this is what happens with leptin. When there's um, a constant release from the fat cells, that you're, you're overeating all the time or eating the wrong kinds of food, foods, the brain will no longer be receptive to the leptin hormone because you're constantly dumping it into the blood through being overweight and excessive eating. So when the brain is no longer um, um, registering leptin, it will no longer speed up your metabolism to burn it, burn the weight off. This is where we start getting um, thyroid problems. So this is why people who are overweight will, who can eat, you know, have plenty of fat to lose. Um, they can go to a buffet and add rice on top of spring rolls, on top of pasta, on top of naan, and all the carbs that you can think of. And then we might find a little bit of protein, and if we dig deep, we might find a couple of carrots. Well, this is because this person's hormones do not work for them. And they can literally not stop themselves from eating. Um, and it's not because they don't have willpower. It's because the hormones are not working for them. Okay, and the fat burner lifestyle is really about resetting your leptin so your brain can recognize it again. And I mean, as I say, leptin is that fuel gauge that is very responsible for, for um, you know, we talk about insulin being the, 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 um, the weight gaining hormone. Well, insulin can actually benefit us. But as I say, oftentimes when people become insulin resistant, they're likely to become leptin resistant as well, where we've got to start reversing its effects. Again, guys, the calorie method, you know, the, the weight loss game of quitting calories will not teach you this. The Weight Watchers of Slimming World will not teach you this. And this is why we can le lose some initial weight la loss going back. We can lose some initial, initial weight loss. But the hormonal response stunts the weight loss. Metabolic damage occurs. We, this sets us up for failure. And we give up. And then that re cycle repeats. Go down the fat loss approach of mastering your hormones. This will not happen to you. Now, um, <clears throat> you've probably heard of hormones and you think some hormones are bad hormones. Well, let me just tell you this right now. There are no bad hormones. There are just imbalanced hormones. Um, for example, let's say you, you want to read a book and you go to the library and it's going to work. You're going to be able to take in that book because it's nice, peaceful and quiet inside the library. Now, let's say that you're trying to read the book, uh, a rock concert. Well, it just doesn't work, does it? <clears throat> and this is the thing with our hormones. Cortisol, imagine cortisol being the book, combined with growth hormone and testosterone, imagine growth hormone and testosterone being the library, when they are in the right social environment is a fat burner. So cortisol with growth hormone and testosterone is a fat burner. Yet cortisol, okay, the book, combined with insulin, resistance and insulin, that being the rock concert, would be fat storing, okay? So cortisol with insulin and insulin resistance is now fat storing. So it's not that there's only there's there's no there's no bad hormones. It's just that we get imbalanced hormones that are in the wrong social or, or environment, the social situation or the environment. Just like reading the book in the rock concert, okay? So let me introduce you to hormonal exercise, okay? Um, if you go to a doctor, as I said earlier, and you ask them you want to lose weight, they're likely to give you what kind of exercise? They're going to give you aerobic exercise like the marathon runner to burn calories. Anything that's long and going to burn as many calories as possible, that's what the doctor is going to tell you to do. The old weight loss game of calories in versus calories out. Okay, so this is something um, what we want to be concerned with that's going to trigger a hormonal response that's going to work for us is something called an afterburn. Now, there is an intensity threshold when you exercise uh, and you breach it, you are going to go into something called an anaerobic metabolism. This is something that magically happens when we go to this place, the brain starts to think, something's going on here. 
um, and it doesn't feel quite right. So I better release some hormones like growth hormone and testosterone and adrenaline and cortisol that will help me get through this disturbance. And what those hormones are then going to do is help you to burn fat after the workout. Okay. So it's not about burning those calories during the workout like the marathon runner. It's about the afterburn of about burning those calories after the workout. And this is why the sprinter can sprint at 10 second periods, intervals, and lose more fat, be leaner, have more higher metabolism, muscle tissue, and um, be in a, a more feminine physique. Okay, so this is very, very important for us to understand. And this effect of the, the afterburn is actually going to last up to 24 hours to 48 hours. So although previously we said the marathon runner is actually exercising for longer and burning more calories in the actual event, you by achieving that afterburn are actually going to be burning calories or burning body fat for a lot longer, for up to 24 hours to 48 hours after the workout. So how do we achieve this, this, uh, this afterburn? Now, I put it into the acronym of BLAST. So I want you to start blasting your workouts. And all you need to remember is that B stands for breathlessness. The L stands for lactate. The I stands for adrenaline. S stands for sweating and T stands for testing. By testing, I mean challenging, like um, a heavy resistance, a heavy weight. We don't want to be like, you know, having a walk in a park during these workouts. So the blast workouts are, um, or uh, applying that blast principle to your workouts, you are now working in the zone that you want to be to achieve in that afterburn that's going to keep you burning fat long after your workout as opposed to just burning off calories during the workout. So why is this? Well, this is a hormonal response. Like I said, the adrenaline in particular is going to start releasing, um, you know, your growth hormone, your testosterone. We're going to start burning more fat as a result of that. Um, the lactate is going to start releasing the, the, the growth hormone, the, the testosterone. So we start burning more fat as a revo result from that. So if we start applying this blast principle to your workouts, you are going to then be in that area where you're achieving that afterburn. Can you, can you start to see where hormones are having a big impact on your workout? Okay. It's not just about calories. Now, which of these two would you say has the more calories? On the left, we've got a donut. On the right hand side, we've got the chicken breast. You probably said the donut. But actually, the calories are exactly the same. Okay, Both calories are 250 calories. Um, and so if, if you only got two meals, um, if you've got a choice of two meals to eat today, you can either have a donut or a chicken breast, both for 250 calories, which do you think is going to, um, keep you fuller for longer? And you probably said the right answer is chicken breast, of course, but which also do you think is going to balance out your hunger, energy and cravings? So you're not feeling hungry like an hour later or you're not having these energy slumps or you're not having these cravings for something quick and um, a quick hit calorie. And again, you probably said it was the chicken breast and you are right. Um, so although the calories are equal, calories aren't always created equal. And that's what we need to understand. OK, um, the effect of the actual food is going to have a big impact on our hormones, our hunger hormones. So. What I want you to start thinking when we are when we're eating our foods and we're eating the right kind of foods, it doesn't matter about the calories in versus calories out. We talked about earlier about the egg white omelet. We could actually eat more of the egg white omelet and actually receive a lot more nutrition um, and a lot more food and actually eat less calories um, and feel fuller for longer. And we're eating more food. Yet with a donut, I don't know about you, but I could eat a whole box of Krispy Kreme donuts, right? but I could not eat a whole box of chicken breasts. So again, although there were initially 250 calories each, the donut left me wanting to eat more, yet the chicken breasts let me feeling um, fuller for a lot longer. I didn't need to eat more and more. Okay, so let's have a little look at these macronutrients right here. We've got the, the, the donut's got 20 grams of fat and 18 grams of carbohydrate, but only 2 grams of protein. Yet the chicken breast has got 11 grams of fat, okay, 
has only got 2 grams of carbohydrate, but 37 grams of protein. So we can see from this actually having um, the lower carbohydrates um, and having a greater amount of protein is going to serve our hunger, our energy levels, and our cravings for a lot longer and a lot more efficiently. Okay, Let's look at these two physiques. They're exactly the same weight. They've got exactly the same BMI. But we can see from looking at them both that um, although the scales match up, they are completely different physiques. Okay, So when we talk about the weight loss diet versus the fat loss diet, Weight loss will not change your shape, okay? Weight loss will change your scales, okay? But it will not change your shape. Now, the gentleman on the right-hand side, the apple-shaped guy, we put him on a calorie-restricting diet. All that's going to happen is he's going to become a smaller apple, okay? He's not going to be looking like the guy on the left-hand side, which I'm sure he'd love to look like, that V-shape, which is the, the you know, the the um, most desired shape for a, for a male and the hourglass being the feminine most desired shape well the guy on the right isn't going to look like the guy on the left by doing a calorie restrictive diet he needs to play the fat loss game he needs to play the hormonal game okay so can you kind of see that as well i mean we're seeing a big um in the media these days about I mean, just this week, there was a female bodybuilder who was told by a doctor to stop exercising so much and stop eating so much because she was in great shape, but because of her BMI was so high, the doctor was baffled and says, you've got to stop doing this. Well, it's absolutely ridiculous because you could take the, um, as I said, the guy on the left-hand side or, for example, we could take um, a physique like Johnny Wilkinson's physique and if he was to walk into a, a doctor's surgery, they would say his BMI is too high. Okay, but we know he's in great shape. He's in um, he's in fantastic shape, and his body fat percentage is, is low. But because of his BMI or his weight being so high due to muscle density, um, the BMI or the weight loss game, um, the calorie game, is not going to um, actually tell you about fat. It's not going to tell you about what the fat is holding onto your body. It's not going to tell you about the shape of your body. So the weight loss game we can start to see isn't going to serve you for fat loss. It's going to serve you for feeling a little bit better when you see the scales go down, when we're losing a little bit of water and a little bit of muscle. It's going to serve you for that and then boost up the ego, but it's not going to serve you when you look in the mirror or the compliments that you're going to, you're going to receive or how you're going to feel in your clothes okay, or how you're going to look naked without your clothes on. So I hope you can start to see the difference here when it comes down to fat loss and weight loss. Okay. So it's um, let's talk about the weight loss game again. So it's about low calories. It's about eating less. It's about doing aerobic exercise and exercising more. We know that this is going to serve us initially, but we also know it's not going to serve us for creating the hourglass physique. It's not going to serve us for our hormones. It's not going to serve us for controlling hunger, energy, and cravings, which are the big gamers when it comes to losing weight, when it comes to... Um, keeping the weight off or staying on the bandwagon or um, getting to workouts and, and, and not feeling down and skipping workouts. So we know that the weight loss game isn't going to serve us to achieve that. Tools for fat loss, guys, is what I want you to take away. So make a few notes. We want a, a hormonally balanced diet. So to do this, we want to eat more, such as fiber and protein. So we want to eat more fiber and protein. We want to perform resistance training, weight, weight, weight training. So that's going to build muscle tissue, lean muscle tissue. And we also want to have workouts that are going to cre create an afterburn. So we're burning calories after the workout, not just during it like the marathon runner. Okay. And we also want to um, take part in interval training such as rest-based training. Now, I tell you a lot about high-intensity interval training. But I see a lot of people doing the high intensity interval training completely wrong. And actually they're doing, I would, I would say, low intensity uh, interval training because what they're actually doing is pacing themselves. Um, they're not giving themselves enough rest. So what I want you to take away is to push yourself until you can't rest and then rest until you can again. So push yourself until you can't and rest until you can again. And what I mean by that is I want you to push yourself at the highest intensity you could possibly go 
Now, if you was to push yourself at the highest intensity you can possibly go, you shouldn't last very long. You Like the sprint, it can only last 10 seconds. And then what I want you to do is have a little bit of a breather, shake your legs out, shake your arms out, and then get back where you left off and sprint again, push hard again. What I don't want you to do is pretend to perform a high intensity workout, an interval training workout, but at a low intensity of this, this pacing yourself out to last every second. I want you to take pride out of pushing yourself so hard that you need to take that rest and then rest until you push again. Okay, just pick up where you left off. So for the fat burner lifestyle guys, <clears throat> we want to be eating more volume, so higher protein, higher fiber, higher water. Okay, if you notice your energy, your cravings, your your, your, any, your hunger, energy and cravings are off balance, start increasing the protein, start increasing fiber and water. Okay, I want you to eat three solid meals per day. I never want you to go hungry. Okay, and eat every three to four hours. So I don't want you to skip meals. For example, I call this continuous meal. We um we let's say we ate a pizza the night before, and um, we're feeling guilty the day after, we're thinking, man, I feel bloated, I ate a lot of calories last night, I'm just going to skip breakfast. And then comes lunch, and you go, I don't feel like breakfast, I'm just, I don't feel like lunch, I'm going to skip lunch as well. And then you get home, and your hunger is that crazy at this point, that you now eat continuous meal. So from 5 o'clock, you just keep eating until 11 o'clock, because your hunger has just gotten the better of you. And you start doing this um, secret eating, you know, and you're prepping food and you're munching on food out of the fridge and snacking on food. And you probably don't register. So I want to ensure you are balancing hunger by eating three solid meals a day, eating every three to four hours and have little snacks in between if you do need to keep hunger at bay. So I want you to actually, we've already proven today that we can eat less, we can eat less um, of certain foods, um, in particular more of your carbohydrate foods, we can eat by limiting the bites that we have. I like to make things very simple for you guys. So instead of talking like grams, I like to talk bites, so mouthfuls, so such as having 15 mouthfuls of carbohydrates in a meal, or 10 or 5, and, 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 and we're going to go through this process of the female fat loss formula of figuring out how many carbohydrates you, you need to have judging on that carb tipping point. But that's for another story. Um, based on your unique metabolism, we want to be um, eating those carbohydrates. And that's what, we, what, we, what we're going to basically judge it on. And then eating less of your reward meals. Okay, so... Things like um, your higher caloric meals or having a cheat meal. We want to eat less of those. We can still include them. There's no off limits with foods. But we want to just be making the right choices that are showing the best results. And that are always balancing hunger, energy and cravings. Okay, so the fat burner lifestyle guys. Can you eat more and lose more fat? Well, we showed it earlier when we when we talked about the egg white omelette, the egg white egg sorry egg white omelette, and the veggies and the apple and the blueberries. We showed that we can actually eat more that are actually less calories and not going to keep us eating more and more and more bowl after bowl or donut after donut. And we can actually by doing this um, keep hunger, energy, and cravings in, um, balanced, and this is going to re result in more fat loss. So yes, we can eat more and lose more fat. Can you work out less and exercise more? Sorry, can we work out less and burn more fat? Well, we've just proven that the marathon runner who exercised more <clears throat> was actually burning more calories in the workout but did not have the physique that we were after. Um, they, were, they had more body fat, they did, had less muscle tissue, they had less feminine shape. And they were actually burning more calories in the workout, but it wasn't showing a big impact on their hormones post that workout. So yes, you can work out less by adapting the BLAST principles and you will lose more fat. Um, can I lose weight while I rest? And we showed this earlier by achieving that afterburn, we will actually burn more fat for 24 hours to 48 hours after our workout. So on the going back to the start of the slideshow, guys, um, when we said, can we burn more fat um, and eat more and exercise less and rest more? Yes, we can. Any questions or anything like that, guys, um, just post them below or on the member site. 
Um, this presentation was just purely about the basics. Once we get hold of this, once we start to understand that it's not about calories, that it's not about pushing yourself for long periods of time and pacing yourself, um, it's not about just cutting calories and exercising more, and it's about taking that rest, we can start to see these basics and apply these basics and, and understand our whole, how big of an effect our hormones have. Then we can start moving on to how female hormones or male hormones will, how we can manipulate them to really um, attain the hourglass physique or that V-shape for the fellas um, throughout this process. So we want to become a detective <clears throat> and forget about just counting calories. We want to become a detective of actually what does this work out and what does this meal affect on my hunger, my energy and cravings. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being good and 10 being bad, and we're looking for, to, to balance around about between 1 and 5, how is your hunger, how is your hunger, how is your energy levels and how are your cravings after that meal or after that workout? And if you can become a detective of constantly getting this biofeedback, you will then figure out your female fat loss formula or your male fat loss formula. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.